his voice I heard. He was calling to me. A young bosun named Eddie Cork. We served on the Goliath together. When the O2 tanks ruptured, four of us made it to the lifeboat, but Cork was still on board the Goliath when the fire broke out. You ever seen fire at zero gravity? It's beautiful. It's like liquid. It slides all over everything. It comes up in waves. And they just kept hitting me. Wave after wave. He was screaming for me to save. What did you do? I did the only thing I could. I closed the lifeboat hatch, and I left him there. I swore I'd never lose another man. Legendary Creature Podcast. So, if you're listening with your kids or your conservative grandma, maybe don't, because we swear. Or you can check us out on YouTube, because hey, that's no place for conservative old women or children. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Alright. Let's see if I can pull this off. And I just, I just made a fuck ton of gravy so that I could just dump that over the top of everything because that cures it all <laughs> like whatever you're eating you're like put whatever you guys brought on my plate and i'm just gonna drown it in vegetable broth gravy yeah i've never had i don't know if i've had vegetable based gravy before well, i'm not actually I, like a gravy I, guy i have a bunch you can try a little but if you're not a gravy guy i mean you may not be interested what do i put what could i put what would i put it over over a hot pocket i don't know <laughs> I'm dumb enough to try it. I'm dumb enough to try your vegetable gravy over a hot pocket. All right, let's see if I can pull this off, my dude. That's. I feel like that's my like friend. I feel like that's what we say whenever we bring a new deck to the table. We'll see if I can pull this off, man. It, yeah. Well, I think like this topic is, or not topic, but this strategy, idea, nuance, notion <laughs> is is kind of a, it's abstract a little bit. Nah, I mean, it's not that bad. Sure. Like on, a ra- on a scale of like, you know, very basic of a one to 10 being like the most, and I guess like just off the top of my head, the most convoluted thing I've seen lately is that lantern combo bullshit. This is probably like a, yeah, maybe a six, five or a six. <laughs> it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, but, I mean, it's like, it's got some complexity to be interesting, but yeah. it's not out of grasp. So... This whole pinger thing with me, it's it's been kind of an odyssey. Gee, I would say so. Yeah. Like a it's kind of been an odyssey. I've seen you fluctuate the commanders you put at the helm, the colors that you use. Yep. Yep. There's a, a variety of issues to consider. Yeah. So a lot of uh ups and downs, a lot of, you know, for fortunate for, fortuitous games and disastrous ones with this <laughs> so pingers uh i don't want to like kind of go too deep into you know the history of them but okay they've been around for a while um, yeah there's old old cards that yeah yeah so a ping, so a pinger at least to me or at least to most players is a creature that deals one damage when something happens either you tap to activate it and it deals one damage mm-hmm. or you uh, cast or, or some condition is met and it deals one damage. So like another one would be like um, you cast an instant or sorcery and it, it pings. So like the thermo alchemist. Sure. You know? And like in a roundabout way, like Niv Mizzet is sort of a ping, right? Like you tap to draw, deal a damage, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's a pinger. Um, and spoiler alert, he's the commander of this deck. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I'm doing it again, dude. I just can't let him go. <laughs> I can't let him go. All the emulations, all uh, of them. Niv Mizzet, daddy. All right, so 
I, I kind of want to just break out the evaluation of, of, of what makes a good pinger and what makes a less than ideal pinger. Yeah. And then what makes a, 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 a just, it's just not going to work. Pinger, okay. At least for what, at least on my scale of evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, again, there's a few types of pingers that exist. Ones that can ping players and that's all they ping. So either they tap and they deal one damage to target player. So like the, I think there's a goblin, like a, go, a two mana goblin that does that. Then there's ones that don't even tap. Yeah, like I was saying, like a condition is met and they just trigger. So like, sure. think the gutter snipe. Whenever an instant yeah. or sorcery is triggered, he'll do two damage to all your opponents. Perfect. So that can be considered a pinger. Um, then there's other ones that tap and ping only creatures. Okay. So there's they don't target people or any target. I guess that's the new thing is a lot of them have like the word any target since the recent change. Oh. But then there's ones that only target creatures. And then there's ones that can do both. So usually okay. those ones require some kind of activation. It doesn't it doesn't usually have a hey, whenever you cast an insta sorcery, deal one damage to, to anything. You know. Sure. Unless we're talking about Niv Mizza Perun. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz you know, he's he's transcended above all other, you know, limitations. So the deck I'm going to go over, um I'm just going to say right now that what we're going to be focused on for this deck is if they can ping both first. Okay. There are some that will do one or the other, but I'm not, but those are the ones that I'm going to prioritize over the rest. Gotcha. So pingers. So we want options is kind of your rule of thumb here. Yeah. I want to be able to target creatures and players. Okay. The other thing that I'm not okay with is something that I have to pay mana to activate the ping. Yeah. Like if it has an activation, like tapping is the most accepted, most like the, the threshold of acceptability. Yeah, tapping is about is all I'm okay with as far as like the cost. The permanent is tapped. Okay. I'm not really okay with having to pay mana to activate activate it and deal one damage. I feel it like just it just doesn't. I equal feel like out. I oftentimes find myself evaluating activated abilities on that basis a lot too. Like, yeah. okay, is if I have to pay mana, is it really worth it? Yeah, I mean, some things it is. Sure, I can't think of any that. You know, I'm willing to pay the mana to act like Felden's ability. Like, oh yeah, that's pretty damn worth it. Totally, you know, something like that. But for one damage, no, no amount of mana is worth that. <laughs> that's why you don't put like Geist Flame and Gut Shot into your commander deck. Exactly. Like, why would you pay three mana to resolve a creature and then and then two mana to activate his ability after he's spent the entire turn around the table? Like it just doesn't. Yeah, make sense. it doesn't add up. Um, so let's start. I'm gonna break this down first by color. Okay. Uh, at least as far as what this deck goes. And then later on, I'll kind of introduce some ideas about where to go from here. Okay. You can't say pingers without red. Yeah, red I mean, is like the, the... Damage is synonymous with red, right? Yes. Like red is the neighborhood that pingers, you know, come from. Like that's that's their <laughs> that's their hometown. Because um, when you're a jet, you're a jet. Yes. And they also provide a good baseline for evaluation. So the baseline I want to start with is the prodigal pyromancer. So he's two and a red for a one one wizard. Uh I think they're just I think he's just a wizard. I don't think he has like human or anything like that. Oh yeah, he's a human. Yeah, when they started strapping human to us. Yeah, so he's two and a red for a uh a creature human wizard. You can tap prodigal wizard and he deals one damage to target creature or player, and he's a one one. So I think everything can in Pinger world can be either evaluated better than him or worse than him. Okay. I think this is kind of the starting point. Yeah. He can target anything. You just tap him to activate. But His this mana is, cost this is, is kind of in the right where you start, which is three. Up from there, like you can you can say the next one up from him would be the cunning spark mage. So same mm -hmm. mana cost. Okay. Same effect. Tap, deal one damage to target creature or player, right? Or I'd just say that he can target anything. Yeah. And he's a zero one, but you know, we already know we're not interested in attacking with these guys. But what sets him up is that he has haste. Haste. Yeah. So kind of see, this is the... This so that's is, kind of above the prodigal py pyromancer baseline a little bit because of the haste that's there, right? To but me, it, yes, because he's haste. Yeah. Like, I'll take that. Uh, the frost wielder. So we would kind of rate her in a weird space, right? So okay. she's, she's one, a red, and a red. So she's double... Isn't double she the, two, a red, and a red? Yeah, sorry, two, a red, and a red for double the... So she's... Twice as much as the Tw prodigal, right? Yeah, yeah. No, she's just... Oh, no, one more. One more. One she's more. just one more, but twice the color requirement. Yes, thing. yes. Yeah, she's a human shaman. She can deal one damage to target creature or player. 
But if a creature is dealt damage by the Frost Wielder this turn, it would be put into the graveyard, remove it from the game instead. Oh. So if she's the if she deals damage and then somehow that creature is removed. Or dies. Yeah, it just says if if a creature dealt damage by Frost Wielder this turn would be put into a graveyard, remove it from the game instead. So you have a red exile, essentially. A little bit. Yeah, so like if I ping something and then you come in with a curtains call, it's gone. Yeah, that like thing's out just, of here. Yeah, it's just exiled. Interesting. Yeah, so red is kind of like, you know, our our starting point. Like, we, we kind of evaluate all pingers around that. Okay. So the other color that kind of shows up is blue. Yes. So starting with just, like, blue, there there's only really two that I think are worth it <laughs> because, of, because of their creature type. So there's the prodigal sorcerer who is a who it's is a literal blue, blue green print, <laughs> and I I believe he's the first one actually. Oh, that's of, interesting. Yeah, he's like the OG pinger, and the new art looks like it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, I was gonna 80s. say it looks like a really unsatisfied dude, you, young Neil deGrasse Tyson. Have you seen like, pictures of him from mm, the '80s, dude? He was mm, he was like yoked, dude. Really? Yeah, the dude was like a wrestler or something. Like, you know what's he was funny stacked. is the the old art is this guy wearing a beret and like. A neck beard. <laughs> yeah, there's like a whole story behind the art and that. I I can't remember what the <laughs> deal is, but there's some significance to the art of that one. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, young young Neil deGrasse Tyson, pro- prodigal sorcerer. So yeah, it's everything Actually. the same, except for it's two and a blue. <laughs> yeah, and then the Zuran spellcaster, which is a is what we would like to call a functional reprint. So it's two and a blue. Zuran spellcaster deals one damage to target creature or player, and it's a one one. So it's it's functionally the same card. Yeah. Um, uh, there's other ones. There's like one that's like a flying. I think it's a mer. There's a merfolk that's like double blue. There's, uh, I think there's some fairies too. I think they're double blue as well. That seems right. Yeah. Yeah. So like the Thornwind fairies. So it's one and two blue flying tap, and it deals one damage. To yeah. So they just player. have flying. So yeah. I don't know where you would be throwing. I mean, unless it's some huge flying creature that you want to throw them under. Yeah. Like I just I don't I don't think the flying is is it's, worth it's the not extra necessary. Blue. Yeah. And then obviously pivoting off red. And then there's some Izet pingers. Uh, at least just to kind of cover the ones that target anything. So there's the Gelectrode, which is probably the dopest ass creature in the entire it's like Andy's favorite. It's yeah, it's a, it's a it's a creature weird. So it's one a blue and a red. It can deal one damage to any any or uh, sorry, to target creature or player. But then it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may untap Gelectrode. It's actually pretty dope. Yeah, and he doesn't lock. Some of them have like these weird conditions where they just lock. And then there's uh dude, probably <laughs> Hang, did I just say that that was the be- the best creature in the game? I don't know. It's let it's me a just, jelly that has electricity like just, shooting out of let it. Let me dude. just hurry up and take it back because there's the razor fin hunter. Whoa! <laughs> so he's a blue and a red for a merfolk goblin. <laughs> merfolk goblin? <laughs> yeah, dude. I love how how the goblin, not even the not even the merfolk, can resist. You know, getting it on with the goblins. That's weird. No, it's perfectly natural. Uh, <laughs> Razorfin Hunter deals one damage to target creature or player. It's a 1-1. One, one. But it's only two mana. That's bizarre. So it's only two mana, my dude. And has the probably the best art. That is the ugliest merfolk on whatever plane that is. I think when you say ugly, you mean the most ideal, perfect version <laughs> of any merfolk you've seen. Yeah, in I'm, I'm confident that's what it was. So yeah, that's kind of kind of a breakdown of some of some of the of the pingers we'll be using. You know? I mean there's there's more that I've got on the list, but you kind of you kind of get the point. Yeah, you know, like I don't need to go through every damn pinger because their effect is pretty close to the same. <laughs> um, there's two utility pingers that I'm including on this list. Okay, uh, one targets just creatures, and one just targets players. Gotcha. But they target a lot of those. So the one that target players is the Thermo Alchemist. Okay. So it's one in a red. It's a defender. Thermo Alchemist deals one damage to each opponent. So when you tap him, oh, he has so that it's same. Each. Yeah, he has same claws as the Gelectrode. He just says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, untap Thermo Alchemist. And then the other one that we want that just targets creatures is the Izet Staticaster. So this thing is pretty fucking stacked. It's one, a blue, and a red for a creature human wizard. It has flash. It has haste. And it says Izet Staticaster deals one damage to target creature and each creature with the same name as that creature oh so it is the anti-token yeah 
pinger. So anything that shares a well, name. Well, one of them. <laughs> yeah, anything that shares a name, it'll just, it'll hit them. So those huh? are just kind of the two picks I picked. Okay. One is like, hey, let's hit everybody. And then the static caster is saying, hey, let's hit everybody that's, you know, a token. And I don't know, to me, I like looking at the is that static caster, I feel like it's worth emphasizing haste because I feel like whenever and you're flash. playing, whenever you're playing pingers, like yeah, right? you're always just like, man, I need haste, man, I need haste. Yeah, that is it. That is a, a complication. So what is the objective of the deck? Like you're probably like, dude, how are we supposed to win? Yeah, there's 120 damage for me to, to, to ping, accomplish to ping in a four-player game. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and say it's it's a tall order. Like like I was saying, it's definitely like a six on the scale of <laughs> of absurdity. You know, like yeah. it's it's not it's not easy to do. Um, but what I think it does let you do is it sets you up in a position where you can react to a lot of um of anything that's coming out. Like as far as creatures go, like it, sure. it, pingers actually deal with creatures very well, even if it's one damage and there's ways to supplement what's going on here. So let me kind of go through, how are we going to get one damage to do the work, to do the work? And yeah, I can say right now, it ain't going to be, what did you say? One, how much? It's one, 120. 120. If you've got three opponents, right? Yeah. You ain't going to be there. Like you're going to, and that's like every commander game, like all well, that. Yeah. Damage nobody's going to be doing all yeah, the work. Like, it's, yeah. It's so it's rare. Hopefully like people will think this is fairly innocuous when you start, but yeah. All right. So let's start with how to boost them pings. <laughs> Ooh. Untap effects. So since they are tapped, we value untap effects because yeah. we basically get an extra ping. Yeah. That doubles the damage. Let's start with the one that's just pretty f- it's pretty let's start with like the least descriptive or least uh discriminatory untaps okay there's the afeto alchemist which is one in a blue for another wizard i hope you keep hearing all the wizards because there's a lot yeah uh it's well, it has a morph ability you can pay one blue to morph it into play and then pay three to turn it face up i don't know if that would be something hmm. you were interested in to like doing but you know you could do it um yeah you can tap it and it says untap target artifact or creature What's weird is that it can target itself. It doesn't say other. <laughs> that is very interesting. Yeah, so that'll Because com- usually there's that kind of clause with a lot of Yeah, that that'll come stuff. back later, so kind of keep that in mind. Then there's the Fate Stitcher. Um, yeah. Fate Stitcher is a really flexible card in that it's a th- it, it's just it's a wizard. Here we go again. It's Fate Stitcher, three and a blue for a zombie wizard. And it says, you, it says tap, you may tap or untap another target permanent. So it has another. It won't be able to target itself. It also has this unearth ability. So should you lose it, you can pay one in a blue. Or sorry, just, just one blue, blue. And it comes back with haste and you can get that effect one more time. Just one and more then time. he leaves the game forever. Um <laughs> Yeah. So that's his that's the last thing he's doing for you, Jackie. God damn it. And then he's <laughs> he's leaving. I don't know why I thought of Roseanne when I said that. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh wait, she OD'd. Anyway, so Ooh. Fate Stitcher is, is the other one. Uh Vizier of the Tumbling Sands. So that's actually a newer card, not a wizard. I just tragedy, yeah, I guess, dude. I guess they just wouldn't tragedy. give it to us. I guess there's clerics in the blue identity now. So Vizier of the Tumbling Sands is two in a blue. Tap, untap another target permanent. And it has the cycling ability too. You can pay one in a blue, discard this card, draw a card. But if you cycle the Vizier of the Tumbling Sands, you can untap target permanent. Okay. It's a one three. Incidentally, all the Viziers from Amon Ket are. Yeah, clerics. so these are these these creatures are kind of they'll do permanence. So, yeah. well, the Fetal Alchemist is a creature or an artifact, but in this deck, that's all that's going to matter. When are you going to untap an enchantment? Sure. You know, or untap uh, your opponent. Um, <laughs> outside of the creatures, we've got the puppet strings. Always good. Yeah, I made those. Work. You were putting that to use this last week? And- yeah, I did. So it's three for an artifact. Uh, you can pay two and untap or, or tap or untap target creature. So this can be used defensively. So again, we when you only have one pinger out, you can either deal two damage to a creature if you commit the two. So ping, untap, ping. Yeah. Or you can just tap the creature. So if you feel like they're going to be swinging at you, you're just like, hey, I'm just going to, yeah, no, and tap it down before they declare you as their as their attack attacked person. I think I think with something like in what you just described there, I think it's worth maybe noting that this type of play requires attentive. Like you need to be attentive playing it mm-hmm. and you need to correctly threat assess. And maybe that goes without saying. But. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the other thing is, is that use these, like use some of this to leverage. Yeah. This is a, this is a really great exercise in, in the EDH poli sci of, of, <laughs> of, you know, you know, first class of leveraging. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we said puppet strings, the mage right stone. So mage right stone is same. It's two mana. You can pay one tap. It says untap target creature that has an activated ability with tap in its cost. Okay. So this is pretty prohibitive. It just wants to untap tapped creatures that tap, which is everything in the deck. So sure. not a problem there. Um, there is the thousand year elixir, mm-hmm. which is very, very good for this deck because it does two things. It gives them kind of like pseudo haste for activations. So yeah. it says it's three mana for an artifact. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though there's their creatures had haste. Those creatures had haste. Yeah. So again, you're you're not really going to be attacking. This is really what you're interested in. But then it has one untapped target creature. If there's anything that's like helping activated abilities for creatures along, this this is definitely it. This yeah. is a pretty self-contained little card. Yeah. To help that idea uh push forward. Uh I think that's the ones that kind of stick out as far as like they just target anything or whatever okay um there's the pimmons aura that i added to this too it you can enchant one of your pingers with one a blue and a blue you basically turn them into a morphling so they yeah. gain they gain four activated abilities uh the one that you the, the one that's relevant is you can pay one blue to untap the enchanted creature so at the end right before your turn begins you can empty all your blue into damage do, 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 yeah so do. if you have three blue you can ping three times you have five blue five times right yeah uh the other one that's also relevant i guess maybe depending on some weird green removal or red removal that destroys creature on the ground i guess you can make them flying block a giant that flyer. happened this last weekend i cast yeah, a kick had... spell and brad had this on his commander yeah and he like, and i encouraged him i'm like give it. your creature flying so it stays alive yeah stay tuned to that gameplay video stay tuned <laughs> and then you can pay blue an enchanted creature can't be the target of spells or abilities this turn for you included so if you ha- get forced into doing that yeah you won't be able to you know the untap will work because it doesn't target you can still use this to untap oh but yeah some of those other ones i don't know why i don't know this one's pretty pretty damn good you just pay blue to untap it um and then there's the two last ones which one of them you probably saw can't coming from a mile away uh but they they're just they're just broke with this, and in combination, they're extremely broke. So the first one's the Intruder Alarm. It's one of Kyle's oh, favorites. It's one of my favorite cards. Dude. Yeah, it's, this is a combo enabler if there ever was one. Yeah. So it's two and a blue. It's an enchantment. It says creatures do not untap during their controller's untap phases. Andy, you out of your fucking mind? Why would I do that? Well, <laughs> like my creatures need when, to untap because it says whenever a creature comes into play, untap all creatures. That's everybody's, but you ain't attacking. You don't really care about people producing blockers. One of my, one of my, like, one game that I'll probably always remember. I mean, this happened months ago. Yeah. Are you going to bring up the elf? When you played this out and I, I had, I was playing my Fenex deck and you were playing your Pingers deck. Yeah. And you and I were just kind of both getting off on that intruder alarm. Like, you're pinging stuff. I'm milling everybody. Yeah. I was like managing you weirdly with it. Yeah. Because I was was using it, you were able to, it was weird. It was a weird (laughs) lock. It was a really weird. You were able to continue to mill. I think it was the mesmeric orb was in play or something. Yeah. And I, I kept milling myself, but then I kept decking things of yours because you kept making zombies. I can't remember the conditions. Yeah, because I think I had the undead alchemist. It was as a well. little parasitic, the two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the intruder alarm, like just to kind of envision this a little bit, if you have three pingers out, you're able to ping something three times for every creature that comes into play. Yeah. So they pass the turn. When you think about that around the table, like that's a lot of untaps. It's a lot of untaps. Uh, if you pair it with the Paradox Engine, oh shoot, sp- spells get pretty crazy. So when you resolve a spell, like a creature, mm-hmm. so, so you cast, so I, let's say I have three of them. I ping you three times. I cast a spell. Paradox Engine goes triggers. They like untap. That. I ping you three more times. The creature ETBs. The Intruder Alarm sees it. I untap again. I ping you three more times. So yeah, that's, you got nine damage just off of nine one damage creature off of, getting cast. Of one spell. Yeah. Dude, I dream of the day of getting the Sphinx Bone Wand up to a point where I can deal nine <laughs> damage for an instant or sorcery. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty close to the same mana requirement. Too. Yeah, right. And then yeah, independent of each other, like you you already know, like it's Paradox Engine. Like oh, yeah. stay tuned for the banless update on that one. So yeah. 
these these last two just really set the deck up. It can backfire, uh, not the paradox engine, but the intruder alarm, like kind of your story. Yeah, like a, like a yeah. Other other decks, especially ones that don't have blue in them, like I don't know any elf deck. It be careful. Oh yeah. But then again, they're elves. Just fucking ping them. You know, it's I, true. I, I just smash, just smash them out. Like, what, <laughs> what are they gonna fucking? What are they gonna do, dude? Um, I'm just thinking of Cranko getting untapped by every creature entering the battlefield. I mean, I would just. I would just forfeit. I'd be like, you win. You can just ping them as they come in. I'm not going to do that, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You deserve I it. I respect it too much. You, you deserve it. That's gross. All right. So let's just say one damage just ain't enough. Like you're in a battle cruisery meta. <laughs> How about you're just in any meta? <laughs> you doesn't, play it doesn't, commander. It doesn't matter. Like this is this. Let's just finish this thought experiment right now. Let's just strap <laughs> some death touch to these goddamn pingers. That's really funny. So because they deal damage, if you grant them death touch, their whatever they ping dies. Oh yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have to be combat damage. This, I'm into a lot that. of people know this, but I'm just kind of you know really trying to stress how how essential death touch is to this to is it, one of my least favorite shred. things to experience with yes pingers. this this pisses people the the fuck off they don't they don't like this like when they see this and kind of see what's going on they're like but oh, i shit. get it it's fucking but this is where the leverage awesome. comes. this is where the leverage comes in don't just ping shit away like this is this is kind of my message here like just say attack somebody else or or I will kill it. Like you could be a, a total bastard and be like, either you attack them or I'll kill it. And they'll be like, fucking kill it. But you can leverage. <laughs> you don't need to be like the second you have this online. Yeah. Just wipe out creatures. Yeah, you're right. You're, as soon as they're untapped, you know, if you have haste or if they're untapped and you've granted them death touch. um, Yeah. I mean, it's your call when you want to take them out at that point. Sure. If they move to give them hex proof, then yeah, there's no discussion. Remove it. Anyway. So Basilisk Caller is probably the best card at this because it's the lowest cmc and it gives you lifelink a little bit so it's one mana for an artifact equipment equipped creature has death touch and lifelink it's equipped of two uh there's the gorgon's head and the gorgon's flare. can i just say that with the basilisk collar as an opponent i regularly overlook the lifelink aspect of that because i am so concerned that you have pingers that have death touch uh um, strapping it to file smasher is pretty dope yeah because People are less likely to bolt attack me in the early game when he's just sitting there as a death touch blocker. And then yeah, the life like as I start resolving those big CMC spells, like I Yeah, like I like the lifelink from yeah, it. So, so hit this so is that, a little different. That one and then Niv Mizzet is another one where I'm just like, man, you get a lot of life actually out of that when it's on something like Niv Mizzet as yeah. well. Yeah. Um so Basilisk Collar, I think, is is the best death touch enabling card. Yeah. Uh, up from there, you got the Gorgon's Head. So it's pretty much the same thing, but just minus the lifelink. And then up from there, it's the Gorgon's Flail. So it's two and two to equip. That's plus one to their... It gives them plus one, plus one, but then, yeah, they get death touch. So the, these three cards are are your death touch enablers. You could get quite a spike... You <laughs> that, could that one draws a little attention. You could, but it yeah, you're right. It draws a little te- little attention. There's also the sword of of Caldra. Oh, and that's that right. Just would exile, it exile them. them. I just I never I can never find a way to get the mana around that. Like I just I don't know what it was. The only the only people I've seen really getting the sort of Caldra put to use have been like in a Miri deck where they can. It's sort of built to cheat around those costs. Are you thinking a? Uh, Nazan. Nazan, I mean, right. You're right. Yeah, Sorry. it's not it's not Nizan. exactly a cheap card. I mean, it's six bucks, but like just to, to kind of it's not in the list, but I'll just mention it. So it's four mana. Equipped creature gets plus five plus five. So they're pretty threatening. Yeah. Whenever the equipped creature deals damage to a creature, remove that creature from the game. So it just they just get removed. They exile all the creatures. Yeah. So I don't know. The effect's the same. Like I don't know. Sure. I get well. I mean, I guess some, yeah, if they've got like some kind of recursion, yeah, they I really got to go. But then just ping it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you really want to bring know. that back? It's just a lot of mana. It's just a lot of mana. Um, th- that's, that's those three for Death Touch. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to throw in here with the untaps now that we're talking about Death Touch. It's called the Thornbite Staff. <laughs> yeah, I so was wondering if you The Thornbite Staff is two mana. It's a tribal artifact shaman equipment. So it says a quick creature has, you can pay two. This, uh, the creature deals one damage to target creature or player, and whenever to so, tap right, yeah. So you kind of turn anything into a pinger, yeah. But where this is valuable is this next line of text. It says, "Whenever a creature is put into the graveyard from play, untap this creature." 
And then the other part that actually is kind of relevant because it seems like outside of the prodigal pyromancer, all the other red pingers, not all, but most, there's some shamans. Shamans Shamans are, are, yeah, it's shamans and wizards. So you can cheat that equipment. But yeah, it says whenever a shaman comes into play, you may attach Thornbite Staff to it. Dope. So Thornbite Staff and Death Touch is a kind of a well-known little bit of a combo. So you ping one creature, Mm -hmm. it goes to the graveyard, the Thornbite Staff sees it, it untaps same creature. Yeah. So you have a pretty much like a static board wipe that yeah. you can just say don't do anything or I'm taking everybody's creatures. It's, it's it's particularly useful in a in a state where like you may have a, a different tap ability on the creature aside from the thornbite staff too, right? Yeah, I'll get to that too. So it's just a really good setup. The thornbite staff is a very good card for for this yeah. type of this line of thinking and lines of play. Uh, also, if they've got something where they're continually sacrificing a creature, Gee, like thanks. they've got their own engine going, well, then you can just turn them into pings to somebody's face. Yeah. So you don't really need to be wiping creatures out. Like, let's say you don't have Death Touch online and they've got something like, like I don't oh, know, you're like, it's a go- it, like it's a Gothic over there, Guru huh? Spores deck. Like that's going to... Oh, yeah. Right. It'll be kind of hard to work that out because yeah. there's some life gain, but you'll definitely be counterbalancing it. <laughs> um. There's one more card that I think is just, it's, it, this is my Shield of Cauldra instead. It's okay. Dismiss into Dream. So rather than, or not Shield of Cauldra, Sword of Cauldra. So rather yeah. than doing Sword of Cauldra, I kind of choose Dismiss into Dream. I really like the art on this card I, too. And I actually, man, this card is actually really cool. So it's six in a blue, so it's seven mana. But it says each creature your opponent can control uh, is an illusion in addition uh, to its other types. It has... When this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. So this goes through indestructibility. It just says the second it becomes yeah. targeted, There's they have sex. to sacrifice it. This is kind of a, a throwback to um, this weird time where illusions had this type line where if they were targeted by anything, they were they were they had to be sacrificed. So think like the phantasmal bear. Yeah. Phantasmal image, phantasmal dragon. Yeah. Uh, I think that might be all of them, but yeah, there's, there's more effects because like it's that, an illusion, but yeah. right? But yeah, it, it basically turns them into illusion. What is good about this card is that it kind of does uh, duty on the back end. So all of their equipment becomes just, they just die. Like the second they move to equip anything, oh, yeah. it was targeted by an equip ability. It, You're like, sorry, yeah. you can't put swift, boot, swift foot boots on to protect yourself from my pingers yeah, because... It just dies. It's just really, yeah, it's really great. It's worth the seven mana. Uh, also, like your untap effects, like say your pingers are out of play, I'm going to tap to sacrifice. Like the minute you go to try to untap, even untapping their stuff with like the vizier of, you know, tumbling <laughs> sands or the fate stitcher, like they basically just turn into creature destruction. Because they're targets. And they just get that's, sacked That's away. dope. That's yeah. really dope. So, and then the Thornbite staff sees it and we just go off all again. You just sit there and try to untap everybody's <laughs> illusions that get sent to the graveyard. That's really fun. Uh, there's one more piece of creature control that I have on the list uh, because I like it, but it's not super necessary for the deck. It's called the Nekote. So it's three mana for an artifact equipment. It, it, it kind of does two things at once. It pushes our damage up a little bit, but mm-hmm. then it has this really weird way of dealing with creatures. Uh, sorry, there's actually one more after this. Okay. Yeah, this thing's, dude. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm. I got my I mean, list. You got. Here. You is, got. You got some thorough notes. Yeah, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. All right. So ne- Nekote is, is three mana. Whenever equipped creature deals damage to a creature, tap that creature. So read this weird. This is weird. A- as long as Nekote remains in play, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So it's an equipment that. Isn't that weird? Like. As long as you have this equipment, whether it's equipped to a creature or not, like yeah. whatever was tapped with the Nekote doesn't untap. Yeah, I, I really like it. It's it's I don't know, I kind of like so you like, kind of so, like, ping so and like in locked. Legend of Korra, there's like the chi blockers, right? Like I think of it like that, like, oh, I've just disabled you, and so you just sit here. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe so I'm it doesn't stop them that. from attacking or anything like that. Like sure. pretty much they already have to be like or sorry deals damage you tap the creature so like if they go into combat i guess it's kind of like that's that yeah right, right so you got to make sure like you said you got to be kind of attentive yeah about hey well, who are you gonna attack um 
well, you're moving to attack. Like, what are you going to do? Like, that, that's where those talks have to exactly. come in. Because otherwise, it's already It, it may actually be a, a deck where you kind of are a little attentive to priority a little bit. Well, just like this... You're moving to declare attacks. Who's your Who's your target? And yeah, then, yeah. All right. So then, uh, whenever whenever equipped creature deals damage to a player, that player loses one life. So it kind of like turns them into one to two. Yeah. So you ping, they lose a life. You ping, they lose a life. So it's they lose two life. So that's relevant too. That's kind of why I put it in here. It's yeah. Kind of does a little bit of that double duty. Uh, the last card, which is kind of a non bow with some of with the death touch effects, but I I still like him because you know you're not always going to draw into them. Uh, it's the Soul Scar Mage. So he's from Amonkhet. He has, he's a human wizard with prowess, but that won't be really relevant. And it says, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, put that many negative one-one counters on that creature instead. So if the creature is has death touch, they're not actually dealing damage anymore. He kind of replaces that effect with putting negative one-one right. counters on them. So. Yeah, obviously take so that's the death a touch over there. these. Yeah, but this is for working down creatures. Yeah, um, because there's there's points where things get out of range, right? Yeah, so like let's say we don't have death touch in play. Normally, like you ping something three times before your turn's over, before a turn's over, and that's it. Like as soon as you move to the next turn, their damage is is it's removed. Cleared. Yeah, they clear their damage. You can't kill it. Yeah. So even if it's a four four, this way you can deal three damage at the end of your opponent's turn, and then as soon as your turn begins, deal that last damage. Yeah, you now you're that. hearthstoning it, right? A little bit, yeah. You're you're removing their damage. Like, yeah, you're <clears> just <throat> putting the negative 1-1 one, one counters. Or enough to, like, nerf them where they can't attack you, yeah. or make the blocks really weird, like, kind of mess with people's blocks a little bit. So if somebody attacks, and you can lower its, dam- or lower its health enough where oh. it becomes unfavorable all of a sudden, because yeah. this is getting kind of convoluted. You've got untap effects. You've got all this stuff going on. Like, I don't... I would not be explaining this to my opponents. I'd be like, this is what it yeah, does. Yeah, like they need to put it together. Yeah. So when they attack and it just suddenly becomes unfavored, <laughs> you know, because you've sh- you've shrunk down their toughness. With yeah. This. So yeah, just some 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 useful stuff there. And then there's a few other um creature disruption I kind of wanted to talk about that aren't necess- not necessarily about pings. There's the sigil of sleep. So it's one mana enchant creature. Whenever enchanted creature deals damage to a player, return target creature that player controls to its owner's hand. Oh. So it's it's kind of another effect where you're like, I really can't deal with this thing. I don't have death touch. I don't have this yeah. these other effects that it's I've out of my range over. to put enough damage. Or in. the yeah. So the, the, this car, this one's weird. It has to deal damage to a player, so they can't be hexproof. I don't. That doesn't That's really happen. That's very a lot. rare. Yeah, in, in my experience. But it says return target creature. So this doesn't get around hexproof, but it bounces a creature. Mm-hmm. So if they're equipped to all get out, minus the hexproof or shroud, sure. you shove them back into their hand. If they're enchanted, you shove them back to their hand. Like this is just another way around it. And it's yeah. only one mana, yeah. but it's only like, I mean, yeah, it's an enchantment. Like if you lose the pinger, it goes with it. Sure. You can't really pick up where you left off. So I kind of throw it in there because I've seen it work <laughs> pretty well. Uh, with that thermal alchemist, well, it deals damage to everybody. So when oh, it right. when it sees things happen, so when it sees instance of sorceries that untaps, or if we've got some of these untap effects going with a thermal alchemist, you can bounce a creature from all your opponents. Okay. That's pretty that's a lot of value right there. Yeah. It won't work with the is that static caster. That's what the death touch is for. If they're really big tokens. But you get what I mean, right? Yeah. There's there's synergy, goddammit. All right. Um next category. Creatures that enjoy the same effects. Okay. Card draw. Oh. So let's let's go back and talk about our commander again. So the commander I chose for this deck was the first iteration of Niv Mizzet. So Niv Mizzet the Firemind. Yeah. So he's kind of been upstaged by the new one a little bit, right? Of course. The instance of sorceries. And of course. He's just a little bit. I mean, he's dope no matter what. What. I mean, he's doing fucking math on but his he, magic card, he, dude. He he benefits from these effects, the untapped taps. Yes, there is wheel effects, and there's more effective ways to run him, but I'm thinking, like, this is... That's a tired strategy that works with this new guy, <laughs> with right. the new version. So this is kind of me trying to, like, reinvigorate the, <laughs> the OG Niv-Mizzet. So yeah, Niv-Mizzet the Firemind. Uh, it's two, a blue, a blue, and a red, and a red. A legendary creature, dragon wizard. Here's wizard again. So flying, whenever you draw a card, Niv-Mizzet, the fire mine, deals one damage to target creature 
or player. Mm -hmm. So he is a pinger. Yes. Really. He pings at your upkeep when you draw. He pings when you draw any other way. Yeah. Uh, he's a four four, by the way. So he's like I think the weakest iteration as far as power, yes. power and toughness he's goes. Tiny. He hasn't Get, he, he hasn't been to the gym in a while. Who gives a shit, dude? Anyway, um, <laughs> if we add creatures that draw cards and he's out, we have a pinger. Yeah, and we draw a card. Yeah. So the archivist is probably our our baseline of of effects that do this. So it's two a blue and a blue for a creature wizard uh, one one. You can tap and draw a card. Yeah. If you kind of go through like creatures that draw cards you kind of run into like a weird wall of uh they don't like giving this ability out like creatures that just tap and let you draw cards honestly i mean there's a there's a handful but then you're probably well it's usually like draw a card discard a card or or you're doing a sami type stuff yeah like you're just not you're not you're not really get like the the mana requirement or the activation barrier or or this one that's like arcanist that's really expensive to get into play and yeah so this is kind of why i'm saying like he's actually kind of the cheapest in that yeah. you don't have to pay anything to get his ability activated to draw yeah. a card. Yeah, that makes Arcanus sense. is in this because it's three pings and draw three cards. Yeah. And with these untap effects, you could draw six cards. You get a whole new grip from this guy. Oh, yeah. Plus, he's probably one of the coolest characters in, in the multiverse, man. I mean, do not concern yourself with my origin, my race, or my ancestry. Seek my record in the pits and then make your wager. How That's fucking, fucking crazy. metal is that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> seek my record in the pits and then yeah you mentioned her already uh we got the lady of scrolls in here because i've been saying wizard all this entire deck yeah time. so she's she yeah she just kind of like taps the wizards that you control to untap or to draw a card so you're making it multifunctional you and can that kind of damage works. or draw cards yeah, so you can resolve you pingers do. that you know let's say we're outside of haste mm-hmm. her ability kind of circumvents haste yeah so Let's say we can't ping, but we want to do something with them. So we use her to empty empty into card draw. But if Niv Mizzet is present, we're pinging anyway. Yeah. So if he's got the death touch or he's got any of this stuff strapped onto him, like we're pinging anyway. This is crazy. Yeah. So he's just really good for this idea because he's a pinger in the zone. Right. And that's something that actually like, you know, he's the only one. I mean, you could, I guess you could say Draco Genius is a pinger, but again, he's behind that barrier of activating mana to get it right which i i guess i I don't know man i like that card a lot it just all these untap effects like i wanted to always i wanted to have them kind of channel back sure you know and then yeah like the thornbite staff is just crazy you'd be drawing cards like crazy oh yeah exactly uh the gilcaster colossus kind of just while we're on the wizard thing uh he's five oh blue and a blue he's a giant wizard uh it says tap an untapped wizard you control return target non-land permanent uh you don't control to its owner's hand. So this is kind of reach for red and blue. We can yeah. bounce enchantments, you know, with this. Which could be necessary. Yeah. There's also the Vaishino Heretic, dude. I just, I couldn't even fucking help myself, man. I had to put him in. I mean. I had to put him in. I mean. So he is pretty awesome as like an anti-mana rock. Like I actually have had uh, games, like I know this is anecdotal, but I've had games where I didn't have any mana rocks in my opening hand, but I had enough to cast him. And I thought I'll just reverse everyone else's mana rock, and it was a it was a shitty thing, but people no, it, brought it people helped. to your level. It did, yeah. So he's two in a red. He's two two in a red. He has a one in a red. To, so he's this is one of those things that let I'm okay to activate it uh, or pay mana. It's one in red. Tap destroy target artifact. Vaishino heretic deals damage to that artifact's uh, controller. Damage equal to the con- uh, the artifact's total casting cost. So if they have some huge artifact they're just gonna eat it for how much and he deals the damage so yeah. if you've got i guess the sigil of sleep you can bounce <laughs> you know? I, I, I don't know i don't know where this would be i don't know if you'd be really going out of your way to equip this guy with but some like of if stuff. it happened but if know, it you know maybe you, yeah you never know you never know <laughs> uh also weird thing about this is that even this works even if it's indestructible <laughs> oh that's weird yeah the artifact isn't destroyed but he still does the but damage. it still does the damage yeah so if they have like a dark steel forge, you're able to just like, oh cool, I can ping them you're for gonna get a lot nine of whenever. <laughs> yeah, like just continually like. Thanks, keep bro. But I don't know. You might have bigger problems if that's, they have stuff that's like clever. that kind of online. <laughs> uh, the last one is Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Well, of course. So he is just broke with a lot of what we've been talking about. I mean, you are playing red, and yeah, we needed a way to kind of just go off. So it's two, a red, a red, and a red for a legendary creature, Goblin Shaman. Hey, he's a shaman. Turns out. So 
he has haste. <laughs> put that staff you in You tap his him, hands. you put a token that's a copy of target non-legendary creature you control into the battlefield. That token gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So him and Thornbite's staff, he just untaps because you sacrifice that token and the Thornbite staff sees it and he just untaps. So you've huh. got a clone effect every turn. So you can make a pinger, tap the pinger, pass yeah. a turn, pinger dies, comes back. So you can ping every turn. That's like the that's like the lowest setting for him. That's like the lowest setting for him. So yeah, he's he's broke. Him with intruder alarm, you've gone infinite. Because oh, yeah. you tap boop, 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 boop. the the the, the, co- the clone of one of your pingers comes in, the intruder alarm goes off. Yeah. He sees it, untaps again, and then you just go off. So him and any pinger, you can just ping until you're that's done. that's crazy. That's a combo to keep your eye out yeah, for. Him as and an intruder opponent. alarm is is already pretty broke. Uh I mean you know something sinister's coming down if you was if you see Kiki Jiki. Yeah, lurk, he's lurk, definitely lurk one of those table. He's just definitely one of those like kill on sight cards. Yeah. He's definitely one of those kill on sight cards. Uh yeah, so like while we're on the topic, let's just talk about some combos that just finished the game because we're kind of managing our way through this, and this is how we're just going to push it through. Yeah. So we already know about Niv Mizzet and Curiosity and Ophidian Eye and those kind of things. Sure. So I only put Ophidian Eye in here. Okay. That's all the only one I so put in there. So there's like one opportunity. There's one opportunity to hit it. You can add the Tandem Lookout. You could add Curiosity, and they help the pingers along. Like you don't necessarily need to equip it to Niv Mizzet. Sure. You can equip it to a pinger and then not have that kind of like, all right, guys, I'm drawing until I'm done drawing. Problem is with this is that this is this combo is is a little overstated. I mean, yes, you can you can end the game pretty quick, especially if the game's kind of gone over long, but it does require you to draw your deck. Right. Like you'll run out of cards. And depending on your mana situation, it might be difficult to kind of you know what I mean? Well, yeah. And and the the state of the game at that point. Yeah. So you could add the laboratory maniac. That could be the win con is you burn people off and then you and the last guy look at each other and you draw your last card and you win. Like, I guess that sweet, I guess dude. that could happen. Sweet. Um there's a couple like more convoluted ones like to kind of just <laughs> stretch out like stuff that you can fall into. So I already talked about the uh the Alfetto Alchemist. So if he's equipped with the Illusionist Bracers, he can untap himself with the second activation. Oh yeah. yeah. So if you have him and like the Gilded Lotus, for example. You tap him, throw one of the targets at the Guild of Lotus, and then the twin target at himself. Okay. So he untaps. Guild of Lotus is now untapped. Welcome to infinite colored mana of your choice, which you can empty that into capsize and just push everything back into everybody's. Yeah, you can just keep going. Dope. Because you have infinite mana, you just keep continuing to buy it back, back, back. You like uh, so the reason I use capsize is that it, it it with the paradox engine can kind of backlog that kind of infinite thing too. Oh yeah. So if you have paradox engine plus enough mana rocks, or just paradox engine plus the alchemist, um, yeah, and a guild of lotus, you can just bounce all the permanents. Yeah, because you again you tap the guild of lotus, add three to your pool, mm-hmm. you know, and then use the alchemist to untap it add three more to your pool yeah cast the cap size the yeah. paradox engines untaps these two permanents it buys back into your hand <laughs> you know and let's say you have one pinger it's over you're like fine because that enough. pinger is kind of in the middle do, do, of all do, these do, untaps do, 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 do. yeah sorry i mean you know we're not <laughs> like this is this is how They're you're gonna complex have to win. combos dude yeah um yeah anything anything with strapping death touch with uh Niv Mizzet and then the infinite, like, or sorry, Niv Mizzet. The I already went over, or sorry, I already went over that. I already went over the Thorn Bite staff, but that's another combo that just yeah. like it just burns yeah. everything off. Yeah. But if Niv Mizzet's in the middle of this, you're drawing cards actually. So for every creature, you draw a card because oh, he's yeah. not exactly a ping, he says draw a card, yeah, it's then deal the damage, right? But yeah, you're digging pretty deep into the I mean, functionally, he is because he's tap and draw and deals damage with a draw, right? But yeah. Uh, I forgot to mention, like, actually, my favorite pinger in the whole list. I've been wondering about this. I've been keeping it's the one my that mouth you hate. Shut. It's the one you hate the most. It but is the art. Oh, God, I love the new art on it. It's so sick. The newer art. It's the Goblin Sharpshooter. I forgot to say this. This guy's like probably the best pinger ever. It, it really is. So he's two in a red, especially with Death Touch. Right? I, yeah, I can't. Yeah, especially with Death Touch. So you don't even need the Thorn Bite Staff with this guy. No. If he's Death Touch. So it's two in a red. Goblin Sharpshooter doesn't untap during uh, your untap step. Who gives a shit? 
Uh, whenever a creature dies, you untap Goblin Sharpshooter. And then, yeah, you can tap Goblin Sharpshooter. It'll do one damage to target creature or player. So, yeah, you give him Death Touch. He just, he'll do it even without the Thornbite staff. Yeah, the Goblin Sharpshooter is is a asymm- well, asymmetric board wipe waiting to happen. Yeah, you're, you've been on the, the bad side of this little little guy a couple times. <laughs> um, one last thing that a two... One last thing that I think is is pretty neat with this. There's a polymorphous jest, which that probably you probably saw that coming from a mile away. Sure. It just transforms an entire uh, board of target players' creatures into one ones. You can just wipe them out. Like, Thanks, buddy. It's I don't know how necessary it's going to be. Maybe you could kind of like take that out and put in that shield of cauldra, or I keep saying shield, cal- the shield sword. Like, sword of cauldra, but I don't know. I just wanted to be cheeky. I thought it'd be pretty funny. Where I feel like I used that one recently to kind of mess you did. with somebody. But the one that the the card I wanted to talk about that I thought is pretty neat. We don't really use it anymore. We used to kind of when we were first playing Commander. Do you remember the dissipation field? Actually, I've seen that on some lists. And yeah. So yeah, it's two and a it's two and two blue. It says enchantment. Whenever a permanent deals damage to you, return it to its owner's hand. So board wipes are very um they're bad they're bad especially for a pinger list Uh, yeah losing one pinger is actually pretty bad because we're kind of stacking all these effects on them uh losing a bunch of them is yeah yeah i I find myself when i play my pinger list withholding pingers i keep pingers in my hand yeah like you you maybe one or two but i don't play them all out no it's it's your plan b pill exactly it's kind of what's happening but you've got to have something for later this is kind of a weird way to like it's an eject button. So if you tap and ping yourself, it sends it back to your own hand. It'll send you back. Yeah. So in response to a board wipe, you can just, nope, eject and you for the minimal loss of life. And and in that case, it's multifunctional here, right? Because it's discouraging people from attacking you. Yeah. I think what we found is that green really likes the dissipation field for its enter the battlefield. Yeah. So like the reclamation sage, but the reclamation sage has one health. It's not going to come near you. with Sure. Pingers. Sure. But yeah. Um, crater hoof behemoth this is a way for it to hit you and then, and then it goes back and, and get that ETB again yeah. sure so that's kind of why it fell out of favor with us but yeah. I think if there's a di- I think it's worth it to kind of sure. s- to kind of save us you know the I the agree pingers. I think it's a cool include and then yeah there's counter magic you know um, I kind of wanted to go over some effects that I didn't include in my list but they're worth considering so there's the whole suite of gain control of target creature or gain control of whatever that you could that you could load into this. So, so are we talking like an Empress Galena? Yes. So she likes being untapped, and yeah. yeah so she's she's really great, Empress Galena. Um, the Will Breaker is another one. Okay. So Will Breaker is a wizard that if uh, if the creatures ever come under the target of an ability, you just gain control of them. Yeah. And then there's actually a, a, an enchantment called um, Charisma. It's triple blue. It enchants and it's an aura, but okay. when they deal damage then you just gain control of them. So you strap that to the Mizzet and you just draw cards and getting control of the creatures. Interesting. I didn't include these because I don't, I don't know if the deck could go off fast enough to pull the whole board over. Maybe with, cause they're not, because a lot of this stuff, like the stuff that I'm kind of setting up requires creatures to ETB or die to yeah. untap. Yeah. So the, my whole idea is I just re- I just want to get rid of them. Yeah, I guess I would prefer controlling some of these creatures, but there's I don't know if there's a reliable way to keep the untapped stream going. Sure. In this color combination of sure. just red and blue. Because another one would be the Beguiler of Will Wills. That right? would work too. Like you have enough, You'd have to kind of chain enough, it right. But you yeah, have I enough about creatures in your deck, but you you could use the Beguiler of Wills as well. Yeah. So yeah, th- I'm just kind of yeah that would work. Yeah, you have to, if you do this, because then you have to grab one. Yeah, so basically, then, so it's three and two blue. It's just a one one, but it has tap gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to the number of creatures you control. Okay, yeah. So you would need to set your board up a little bit, which is fine. But then once they start happening, yeah, then you get the big guy. But again, of the Will's stream out. of untaps. It's like let's try to line this up. Like right. you would need. I mean, I guess you still could do it if you have another way to ping something else. I don't know. The, the stealing effects, like. It's They're, cool. Try them out, but I I don't know. For some reason, I just couldn't wrap my head around it with just the yeah the untap effects that I was kind of betting on. Yeah. Um. The other thing is that there are some wizards that tap to counter spells. Oh yeah. So there's three that aren't really hard counters. There's the patron wizard, 
the disruptive student, which I think is just Teferi. Yeah, I was going to say that looks like, I think it's, I think like there's flavor text about Teferi. Pre-graduate. Right. And then uh, disruptive pit mage. So they have kind of like when they tap, they can counter a spell unless the player pays one. So with all of your untap abilities, you can kind of like empty that on a, on a spell that you just can't, you just can't see it happening. Like it can't happen. <laughs> Somebody's board wipe or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I had those on my pinger list originally and I never, I don't know, man. I just, I'm, I'm better just with the raw, a raw counter. Like, let me just counter it. The one I did hang on to was Urtai wizard adept. Okay. Because you just pay two and two blue and you just counter a spell. Yeah. So it's kind of a, I mean, it's kind of a hefty, it's kind of a hefty ask, but at least you, sure. at least it's always there. There's the threat of it. You've kind of got the leverage. Um, you do have to leave th- four up though, which is kind of a lot. Sure. It's kind of a lot. Sure. <clears throat> but yeah, he's the, he's, those are some ideas. I mean, you could load those in, you know, depending on how you feel like your meta is going to work. Uh, there is a way to kind of, I was thinking about it and I didn't come up with a, a worked out list. Maybe if like, before we push this, I can come up with one, Okay. put it up. But I, I came up with like an instant or sorcery spell slinger version of this. So it, it's leaning more on the thermal alchemy, you know, the gutter snipe, yeah. the firebrand archer kind yeah. of stuff. And then I was thinking like, well, let's just throw the new Niv Mizzet in there. But I don't know. Like we just did a deck tech about that Niv Mizzet. Sure. You know, and that would be very interesting though. Yeah, there's something just, that there's something supplemental beyond the other beyond Perun, right? Yeah, and then with of that. course there's the dramatic reversal with this Isochron Scepter. Like I didn't even include that in this sure. because you have to have both. Yeah, and I, just one without the other is I did. There's actually not that many instances of sorceries in this list, honestly. So but, it could be like the Isochron Scepter could end up being a dead card in that case, right? In this, yeah, yeah, you'd have to, the only time I see it working like. I'm I'm hesitant about putting high Sacron scepter in decks because you kind of want like a package of, all right. Well, I'm not gonna do the dramatic scepter. Let me at least get a swan song on there or yeah. brainstorm or yeah. something. But um, I think if you kind of did an instant and sorcery based deck, it probably would make better sense just to do that because you can just you draw like crazy mm-hmm. and their draw cards are like you're just kind of the same idea. You're just instead of loading the deck full of untapped stuff, you just strip that out. Yeah. And put instant or sorceries in. Bring the new Niv Mizzet in, who likes not only your instant or sorceries, but even your opponents. Yeah. So it's it's just a smoother idea, but I think it's hard, it's it's not as defensible. I actually don't see it as being re- as reactionary as this, unless you loaded the deck full of instant or sorceries that were like just removal based. Like all of them were like dealing with something that these. I don't know. I I'm. It's a kind of a too loose of an idea. I I was. I just <laughs> thought about it like at the end of today yeah i was like i wonder if you could do it that way that is fascinating yeah is but you know i don't know like if you're gonna go that far it's like well then just do the wheels like yeah just, you may as why well. bother may you're, as you're well. pretty close it's like i don't know i guess if you're trying to be cute like you're you're starting to kind of cross over onto the other side of this venn diagram right like let's just move okay so this is the last section of our odyssey and sorry this was like a i don't know you already know I've been up all day today. <laughs> like, I'm a little, I'm like frazzled. But yeah. you've got like the true wizard look, like, like you've been in the lab with the messed up hair and like yeah. the crazy ideas. Yeah, but this is the last part. Okay, and hopefully all this made sense. Like I always worry about that. Like it's coming off the listeners. Like this guy's a fucking nut. Like he doesn't make <laughs> he doesn't make any goddamn sense. I think it's dope. Uh, adding another color. So there's pros and cons. To, to doing this for this strategy. And you speak from experience. Yes. So a lot of the time, you know, you hear it all the time, like, ah, if it was only this, if it only had this color with it, if it was only that, like, yeah, for this strategy, we got to really kind of recontextualize what we've been doing this entire deck tech. Um, the, the stars of the show actually aren't the commander. It, it really like yeah. what I've been talking about, like it's just the pingers and blah blah blah. Like you could get along without ever casting Niv Mizzet, which I, is kind of beautiful. I can really kind of guarantee that, right? Do that. He's awesome because he just likes the same effects they do, right? And that he turns all draw spells into into pings that he right. can do. And then yeah, there's that curiosity. I'm just curiosity of Fiddy and I. Just I'm done with you. Move right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's a huge trade off. If we switch out of this color, if we add another a third color to this idea we lose him. Oh yeah. Right. Um, but then, yeah, we can kind of gain some of, some of what these colors bring to the table. So you kind of have to balance that, like losing Niv Mizzet 
which is not worth it, God damn it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but let's start from from the least likely of our of our candidates. So white. So white affords us some effects that we could consider. Um, it gives us kind of access to protection spells like Mother of Runes. You know, like mm-hmm. she can kind of, those untaps can muddle with things a little bit. Yeah. Um, the Boros charm. Yeah. Like just to just make them indestructible. Like rather than countering the spell, we can come out on top and still control our, our, our stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the selfless spirit. And then the really big one is the Jeskai ascendancy. Basically, anytime you cast a non-creature, you untap all of your creatures. That so it's kind huge. of a, a, a combo there. The trouble with Jeskai, though, is that it doesn't give us any commanders that synergize with this strategy. And I mean like any. Right. Even if you include the partners, it means at some point you're going to have to have a Kiri or Bruce Tarl or mm. that god of Ludwig and then I guess Crown, which is kind of passable, but we just don't get any. I mean, I get, I, I just, you can't. Yeah. Nar- Narset doesn't help because these are all creatures. She doesn't like creatures when yeah, she attacks. She's like, I don't want and do she's this. extremely expensive. Shu Yun, same thing. He doesn't really like creatures. He wants instants or sorceries right. to gain himself double strike. He's just right. not the guy for us. So we just don't have a good creature, a commander candidate that's even even in a stretch with Jeskai. And yeah, there's some Jeskai pingers, or sorry, white pingers, but they're conditional. The creatures have to be attacking. Right. And they're usually behind, some of them, a lot of them, are behind mana activation barriers. So I just, I couldn't, I wouldn't make it, I just can't. Yeah, no, I, uh, I wouldn't recommend white to add to the, the pinger strategy, kay. personally. Then there's black. So black affords us tutors, duh, and then it has just straight up destroy effects. Mm-hmm. So there's tap, destroy target creature. So we've got like the court assassin, which is kind of my complaint about the white, but it just utterly destroys them if they're tapped. Any creature that's tapped, it just wipes them out. With the thorn bite staff, it combos really well. Uh, yeah. There's the avatar woe. There's mm-hmm. Vishara the dreadful. So we we kind of grab tutors, black, black recursion too. Um, the creatures aren't the commanders aren't as bad in this category, I guess. If you really wanted to do a Grixis pingers list, there are some Rakdos pingers, but I think they're there. There's one that's like a that gets a one one counter when a creature dies or something. Like there, it's not oh, bad. It's just that again, like I don't know. It, it's not better enough, I think, to to lose <laughs> Nivmizit. You know, like but I don't know. Some some thoughts you could do Nakuser. Because yeah. he deals damage, so he's not exactly like our tap. He doesn't really care about the tap, untap stuff. Sure. But, yeah. The damage is happening. The damage is happening, but so is the card draw. Like, he's giving you card draw, but he's giving your opponent's card draw. Um, Inala, because she cares about wizards. So you oh, would yeah. never really cast her, I don't think. Uh, well, maybe you would, because that tap, untap stuff. Yeah, you might. She has, like, a weird deal five damage, doesn't she? Yeah, that's <laughs> like, I think you need enough bodies for it, yeah right? you need a bunch of wizards to complete the to complete this this the conjuration circle but i don't know there's some synergy there but she's yeah. it's kind of a long shot you know it's kind of a long shot yeah it is. uh i guess cedrus to recur them but dude i don't know man and then kess i mean i could see her all day just listing off commanders but you kind of see my point yeah like, like now you're trying to jam a strategy in just under any just to commander. get black in and what am i getting here tutors destroy some reanimation like I don't know. Yeah. You know, I just, it, it's, it's not worth losing to miss it. Yeah. All right. So then the last color that's on this, and this is probably the one I'll probably go. I will mention with exhausted. Anala, it's player loses life. It's not even damage with that bigger effect. Right? They just lose life. How much life is it? It's five? Seven. It's seven. It's five wizards. But I meant with like all your untap effects, but, but I don't right. know how you'd, un- I don't know. I don't know how you'd pull it off. Yeah. There's, there's in all the combos, but I think that's its sure. own, it's its own sure. deck. Uh, so a while ago, Josh Lee Kwai put out a deck that's pretty much kind of what I've been talking about. Yeah. It's a pingers list. Yeah. Um, I think he calls it his Tim deck. And this is before you and I were doing content and I listened to the episode and I was like, this is this is probably it's probably one of my favorite pieces of content they've ever done. And I'm probably yeah. not the only person that thinks that. Um the list on, that he has online is dated, so we'll include it in the notes, but sure. you'll, you'll know right away because you'll see the Prophet of Crufix on his list. But he's definitely found the right third color, and that's that's green. green. So I this has to be, if you're going to do a third color, in my opinion, and in you know JLK's opinion, it's the best pick. Yeah. So what green gives us, obviously, is, is, is ramp. 
Yeah. Um, it also adds a way to untap and tap lands. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, sorry, just untap lands. I don't know you tap lands, but yeah, you would untap them. So like the Argothian Elder. Sure. So this is another mana boost rather than you kind of relying on the one Gilded Lotus that I was talking about. You can untap two lands and any lands that produce more than one mana um, so kind of like the, the bounce lands, yeah. you know, from the, the original Ravnica, they, they get really potent with green. And then, yeah, there's, there's two really, really broken cards that come to mind when you think green. So the first is the seed born motherfucking muse. God damn. So she is zero requirement for untap. You're, you're pedal to the metal when she's out. You, pass, yeah. you ping everybody past your turn, ping everybody past your turn. Like you just empty your pings every turn. Yeah. Without consequence. Uh, then there's quest for renewal, which is easy to charge up. Yeah. You'll charge that up pretty easily. Yeah. So it's a, it's a two mana enchant that you charge up and once, what is it? Five? I think it's five quest counters. Yeah. Once it gets fully charged, it does the same thing. So at the end of every turn you untap. Four quest counters. Yeah. Sorry. And is it all non-land permanents is what it does? Yeah. So as long as there are four or more quest counters on quest for renewal, untap all creatures you control. Whatever. doesn't we, matter. Yeah. That's we empty want. our draws. We empty our pings. We do this. Yeah. It's just, it's just crazy. Green. And gives it's this, and, it, and by the way, the quest is just, you need to tap creatures. So you're, yeah, you ping and they're fill it easily. They're done. Yeah, so it, it's a great card. It's the it, it's the budget, and I say quotations, Seaborn Muse. But for yeah. this deck, it's pretty much a Seaborn Muse. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, green green adds that. There's there's a lot of cards of interest. There's a Merc Fiend Liege. It only ends up un, untapping blue or green, but a lot of those are sure we'll guys that it. you can tap to untap something else. So you can untap your Alfredo Alchemist and turn around and ping somebody with it. Uh, and then yeah. There's creature tutors and ramp, so we already we already went over that for green, um, but you kind of run into a little bit of a wall again with the with the commanders in team of colors. So at the time, the one that he was rolling with was uh, Riku of Two Reflections, which makes some sense. Uh, I've always said that kind of people's idea about Riku is he's the he's just to anybody who hasn't played commander, you're like, God damn, he's fucking awesome. Right. Like he was this one is of your my... first commander. Yeah, he was. I think he was a frustrating yeah. project for you. He is because he, you just, he kind of encourages you to play greedy with the yeah. CMC. Yeah. I've kind of said like, you do want to kind of keep your CMC like top end, some creatures at five, like getting two magmatic forces out, <laughs> which he's got the flavor text for that. Sure. It's just really hard. Like adding that two extra blue to clone a creature. It's, it's actually a lot. But a lot of these pingers are only three, so you're paying five to get two pingers at once. Oh, yeah. What I found, though, with using Riku as the commander is that you never end up doing that because you got to pay five to get him into play. He doesn't really do... You probably won't have enough yeah, mana... Like eating up turns to, to make follow through with another twin. Yeah. So it's just... It doesn't ever really happen. Yeah. Um, usually he stays you have in other the zone. setup that's probably more important than getting a doubled pinger, right? Yeah, it's just there's yeah, there's there's lower there's lower cost barriers to get a double a double ping in. Yeah. An untap will simply do it. So and I think if you listen to the podcast that that, that they do, he kind of says the same thing. He's like, yeah, sometimes I don't even ever cast him. <laughs> you know, again, this was a while ago. Like sure. there, we had, didn't have as many options as we do now. So Riku's one idea. Um then there's the Maelstrom Wanderer. So he is a combo He's a Cascade commander. He's seven mana. But what I valued from him, because I tried him too, was that he actually granted all of them haste. So you can go back and kind of strip some, or if not all, of the haste cards out of your deck and add more tech. Yeah. Because you have haste in the command zone. And you could potentially Cascade into a pinger or some effect that that the pingers care about. Cool. But he's a lot of goddamn mana. There was games where I, I just... There wasn't a window to cast him. You know what I mean? Like I had the mana and I needed to use it to do some untapping or I needed the mana to do something else. Yeah. So then I tried some partner pairs. So right off the top, you're thinking, well, where's Kaidel? Like she would be amazing for this. She's a wizard. So Azami likes her and so does the Gilcaster Colossus. Tapping to add mana. She taps to add mana. So she's kind of a mana dork in the zone. And yeah, she's she's cool. Yeah. Again, I, I never saw a way to justify bringing her out of the zone. She's she's just a really expensive mana dork. Yeah, if you've got some kind of card draw thing going on. <laughs> but I don't know, man. Like, what what point do you that's, bring her into that equation then? Like, let's say you already have question. Arcanus out. Like, maybe you just want to just draw the three cards You're and like, do, do something that. with the three cards you drew with yeah. her still in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just it, the line of play was weird. And yeah. then yeah, she didn't she didn't bring haste to the table. Um 
the other partner with her is is Crown. Crown. And I remember suggesting Crown to you early when, Crown you, when is, you were doing this. Yeah, Crown's not great. Really, right. he's just a big flying blocker. Right. That, hey, if somebody likes to cast a lot of spells a turn, you can Which draw it, on my, the second My level. theory with Crown is that there's a lot of turns where people cast two spells. Yeah, that happens. That happens. Um, so in my opinion, it's Thrasios and Crown are the, are the commanders for this. Okay. Because a lot of the time, you're leaving mana up to see what you need to do. And right. And let's say you're playing the leverage game that I encourage with this, with this strategy. He's the best, he's the best little whorehouse in Texas, man. <laughs> like he's, he's, he's the best mana sink. He's, he's amazing. Like Thrasios is, is amazing. You just dump the mana. And yeah, yeah, like if some of these other requirements that I've been talking about that I haven't been willing to commit to the deck, if you get training grounds going oh geez it the training grounds backlogs right to your commander right and yeah some of these other pingers that are actually pretty strong and there's way more man i haven't even covered even like i probably covered none of them <laughs> like there's like, there's, there's a lot there's a bountiful supply there's a lot i mean there's there's yeah there's a lot there's legendary pingers that are just mono red yeah you know um but yeah he's he's really great in my opinion for for the pairing crowns just kind of like just to get the colors yeah, like, and give me the color let's say you really need a goddamn blocker yeah but it, it really is it's it's the thrasios i yeah. know dude on paper kaidel like would make it but she just doesn't uh i'm not even going to entertain the idea of doing four color because could be a greedy bastard <laughs> i get i guess if you if somebody like, walked you can in go and down that it, path if i guess if somebody walked in right now and said you give me the fourth color motherfucker i'm gonna shoot you in the face it's it'll be black i guess you have considered then you're, that before but I, then you're in smasher and thrasios again and there's i don't know you, you, you know you've I mean? got some funner things you could do uh, yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with those two yeah but honestly and I know I've I know I've been a Niv Mizzet fanboy since we started this podcast. You've been a Niv Mizzet fanboy. And since a lot we of it contacted lot, Magic. Yeah, the a lot of it is yeah irrational weeaboo stuff for sure about him. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, dude, <laughs> I'm serious. Like I really do think he's the best he's, option. He's legitimately this, well paired with for the this strategy. strategy. Yeah. So him first, and then if you're really gonna abandon you know the two colors yeah which the, the, i mean there's a reason if those you're really are really gonna abandon the dragon wizards then yeah i i would suggest doing thrasios and crown okay and then yeah don't talk to me about four or five color like i don't want to hear it i really think white's unnecessary well okay so there was another thing another avenue i was trying to go down which was doing a naya version of this deck because yeah, blue is really bringing us card draw and some untap effects, and then like two pingers. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's yeah. more there's more. As blue you say, pingers. like there's some more that you didn't mention, but like yeah, but I, whatever. Sure, like, I like. Sure, I wanted to kind of keep the synergy as as tight as I could get it. So yeah. I was like, they got to be wizards at the least, I guess. Fair enough. Uh, there's a couple others, but they have these weird restrictions where you have to do the ping during your main phase, which right. is just wholly not what this deck can do. Like you need to be able to hold up the ping and use it to leverage on, your on damage away terms, from you. Yeah. yeah, use it to be reactionary. Like these guys just they they don't they don't yeah. work. Um but anyway, Naya, uh somewhat is got a lot of things to be desired in a pinger strategy. Who she that's a good is point. her own threat separate from the pinging thing. Yeah. She's a double striking what is she 3-3? Three, 3-4. Three? Three, Let's look her up. I know she's a double striking 3. Like you know I know that. Um she also grants all your creatures haste, which is 3-4, yeah. Yeah, she's a 3-4. She also grants all your creatures haste, which is yeah. like I said about the Maelstrom Wander. Like I was willing to pay seven to get that. The Cascade was kind of an afterthought, but having haste in the zone, there's a bunch of cards you don't have to include now. Yeah, when you were in the tweak phase, the the I number one thing I heard was I need haste. I need, I need haste. haste. Yeah, because you guys were you're getting wise to my act. It was yeah. like get the fuck you're out like, of I here. Need to do kill this it before if... it untaps, like that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Or uh-huh. kill yeah, kill it before we. You know, clear, somebody's clear sickness. sickness is gone. So yeah. she brings a lot to the table, but then you lose a lot of the untap effects that blue gives you. I right. guess you could, you still get the mage right stone. The, I mean, she actually is an untap in the zone too. That's true because she's white and tapped to and she's vigilant. So you can swing at somebody hard and still have that available. Like, yeah, she's not a bad idea. I just don't know how to work that out. If somebody figures out a really good one, I think there was something going around with like archers tribal or something. Uh, a yeah, list the problem with green pingers is they all deal with flying creatures. Yeah, so it's the same problem. Like white wants the creatures to already be attacking, right? 
uh, I don't know, man. I just, I'm, there's something about that. I'm not, I'm not okay with. Well, yeah. And there's a lot of white, I guess, synonymous with pingers where it's prevent damage, like tap to prevent. Yeah. There's a lot of that too. Uh, there's the intrepid hero that can just tap, destroy target creature of power four or greater. Like he's yeah. actually pretty good, but I don't know. I, the, Hey, is she worth it? Is she worth ban- abandoning niv Miz and blue? Yeah. That's, that's kind of a tall, tall ask. She's fucking awesome, though. Like, I really want to do a, a yeah, you've a fleshed been, out. Yeah, you've been, like, thinking about Samut in a variety of ways for a while. Yeah, I've been stalking her for a while. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Watch out. She's She's got that double strike, dude. Yeah, and there's this guy that keeps showing up in her Facebook posts, too. I don't know who he is to her. <laughs> anyway, that's that's the Odyssey. Ups and downs. When I started playing the deck, I... I don't know, man. This this strategy will get under your skin. Like, if anybody tries to take this on, they're gonna not agree with some of the things I've done, and then maybe go in a different directions. Like, there's it. It's so m- meta dependent, I guess, more than a lot sure. of other strategies. Because like some some strategies, like they're the objective best thing that you can do with the commander, and then yeah, maybe like that bottom, what twenty five percent is just kind of the meta. Yeah, you know, if we're talking like the seventy five percent theory thing, like yeah. But in this, it, I don't know, man, like if there's like a black sacrifice thing going on a lot in a meta, like let's say you have like a ton of flesh bag marauders and then the power creep version of that, this deck will have a hard time holding up against that. Well, one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of you, of your play style is that you, you favor strategies that are not vulnerable. This is probably the most vulnerable strategy you've, you play. Yeah. It once you lose like that pinger you that you've very been investing open. on, it's it's bad. Yeah, it's like bad. And and the other thing is is that you can put too many. Like I had to find a strike a balance. Like there's the Vithian Stinger. Like there's there's a bunch of other ones that are they're good. They're yeah. But I you kind of have to figure out this weird balance. You don't need a lot of them. You need like maybe one or two, and then you're just kind of <laughs> trying to set up your engines a little, a little bit. bit. That's kind of why I was like, I don't know. Why don't I just have it in the zone with Niv Mizzet? Like then you just draw a card too like there's a lot to like about having him at the helm of a pinger deck it's really interesting um i guess one last piece of caution if you play against people you don't know we talk about that a lot but if you play against people you don't know they're probably gonna wonder what this niv mizzet deck is gonna do yeah that's a, that's a question with commanders. because he's like, definitely what? got a reputation right uh it might be safer to try this now if you're a shop type of guy because the new one's out and a lot of people probably be thinking like, did you just not get one yet or what? <laughs> and you're like, no, man, it's a whole new idea, but you don't want to be like, Hey, it's, it's pingers because they're very easy to remove. Sure. You know, creature, sure. they're one ones like most of them, like they're, they're easy to, yeah, they're loaded. The oh yeah. Wild pair. That was another card that green brings to the table because you cast a pinger and you can bring another one in from, Oh, there. interesting. I never used that. I remember I was, was, I was always kind of like on the fence about, cause it's, I don't know. Huh? Cause again, I don't want to empty my, all my pingers to a board wipe. Like, sure. Oh, well I've emptied my because deck. Would, it is coming. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I, I, the more I think about it, like the more I want to transition the deck over to just, is that, I haven't seen drop, it in a little while and I, I, I like it. It's, it's a frustrating deck, but it's really fun. Yeah. You, well. you get pretty mad about this thing. You well, yeah, it, I, like I think I play a lot of creature strategies and, this deals uh, with it, and yeah, it manages. Yeah, it. like Crav, Crav, and Regna. Like, yeah, they're this. Just, this will just totally oh, outclass yeah. it. There's, no, we don't even need. Yeah, to talk. one one goblin sharpshooter, and I'm flipping the table. Over. Yeah, well, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Odyssey's over. We made it back to Troy, and we gotta kill all those guys. <laughs> gotta kill that are trying all the guys that have moved into our house, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll just ping them to death. <laughs>